You know who God is. I'm not talking about you knowing about him. You know him. Hallelujah. He says you can only boast if you know God. Who is this God? What do you know about him? This God is the owner of the universe. Hallelujah. You want me to say that again? This God that we talked about is the owner of the universe. He owned every single thing in the universe. Hallelujah. I'm going to read through a few scriptures for you quickly so that you can understand what I mean when I say God owned every single thing. Even you yourself, he owned you. He owned everything that you own. So stop posting around. Stop bragging around. Hallelujah. He's the owner. Hallelujah. Rika Prata Sakala. Sheta Prekete Kede. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to be reading from the book of Nehemiah chapter 9, verse number 6. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says, Though, even though, at Lord alone, that is, he's saying, you and only you, you are God alone. Hallelujah. Thou, even thou, art God alone. So no matter how much idols or how many idols people worship here on earth, there is just one God. There is just one God. Turn to your friends. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your husbands. Tell your wife. Tell your family members that all the other things that people are worshiping, referring to them as God, they are idols, not God. There is just one. Thou even thou art Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heavens of heavens, with all their host, and the earth, and all things that are therein, the seas, and all that are and all that is therein, and the, and thou preserved them all, and the host of heaven worship thee. In the book of Job, chapter twenty-six, verse seven. He stretched out the north over the empty space and hung the earth upon nothing. <laughs> Talking about science, he's the greatest scientist. That is the work of God. Psalm 102, I love this, verse 25. Psalm 102, verse 25. I read. He says, Of old, take note of this, of old as thou laid the foundation of the earth. Who laid the foundation of the earth? Jehovah God. And the heavens are the works of their hands. God is the one who designed and fashioned the heavens. Not you. So if you are an atheist, shame unto you. Because in fact, I read in the scripture, the Bible says, the fool says there is no God. The only fool that God knows are those who decided to deliberately reject his existence. So if you are saying there is no God, the Bible says you are a fool, not me. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, he says, Through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Jehovah created the universe. He designed and purified and he does everything. Praise the Lord. He is the reason for everything according to the word of God, according to Hebrews. God is the reason for everything. He owned the heavens and he owned the earth. So according to Genesis, if I let me tell you something. The reason why the Bible, this Bible, this book of the law, this Bible is the compass to life. Hallelujah. It is the only manual. It is the only manual to life. The Bible says, right from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible in fact declares that God owned everything. And the reason why we have Genesis, Exodus, and on and on and on, on to Revelation is that this book clearly declares that God owns the universe. I mean, including you yourself. He owned everything. God is the owner. So when Jesus says, I will come again and I will take you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. He wasn't joking. It was not funny. He meant exactly what he said. 
Hallelujah. God is in the heavens. And the epic of the universe is the heaven. Where God rules and reigns. Where he set up his sovereignty. And he reigned. He, he, he governed the universe from his throne that is set up in heaven. Hallelujah. Deliberately today, I'm going to focus on God and not on heaven. And the reason why I made all these scriptures clear is for you to understand that I am not against anyone going to heaven because I'm going to be there with you. We're going to be there together. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I want to go deeper. I want to show, show you certain things that a lot of people have already, they, they've been making a whole lot of mistakes. And there are so many misconceptions about God and heaven. And the funny thing that I see going on today in Christendom is that people assume God to be their servant instead of their God. And people are much more concerned about heaven instead of the God who owned the heaven. Hallelujah. Many of us have lost the revelation about eternity. The revelation about eternity is not even about heaven. It's about God, the owner of the heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not here to belittle the issues and aspects about heaven, God forbid. I will never despise anything that has to do with heaven because I can't wait to be there. Hallelujah. I can't wait to be there. But let me give you some clear examples so that you understand where I'm going. Number one, if I owned a house or a car, put it that way, let's say a house. Let's say it's a beautiful mansion. And you walk past by and you see that mansion, trust me, you will admire at the building. Am I right? Of course. You will admire at the beauty of the building. You're like, wow, this is a mansion. This is unique. Why? Because of the beauty? Because of the design? Or because of the color? Because of several reasons. But do you know what? Even though you will admire the mansion, but trust me, you will honor me more because I'm the owner. You will honor me because I'm the owner, but you will not give that honor to the building. Am I right? Obviously, yes. You will admire the building, but not honor the building. But you will honor me because I'm the owner of the building. Why? You know what? It, you know the cost of the building. Number one. Number two. You know what it takes to build such a structure. Hallelujah. Equally so, if I'm driving down the city of Toronto. And I'm driving the best car. What is the best car? What are some of the cars that we know? I'm not good in cars. Give me one name. No, no, no. I mean the best cars presently. A Lamborghini. A Lamborghini. <laughs> Someone says a Lamborghini. Okay, I've never been on a Lamborghini. I've never rode on it before. So let's say a Lamborghini. If, you, if you're driving downtown the city of Toronto, or let's say I'm driving downtown Toronto, and I'm in a Lamborghini, Trust me, you will admire the car, right? You'll be like, ooh, wow, that's expensive. But that will not be much more major to you. The most interesting or the most important aspect of that car will be who is in there, who is driving that car. Am I right? Because you're not going to say, oh, that car is wealthy. You're going to look and say, wow, that guy is wealthy. So your interest is no longer going to be on the car now. But your interest will be on the driver of the car. Equally so, I use this physical illustration to get your attention towards heaven. In other words, I'm trying to say to you that God Almighty is much more important than heaven. Hallelujah. God is the owner of heaven. He owns the heavens and the earth. He beautifies heaven. In fact, Jesus himself says, I go to prepare heaven for you. So he says, that then I'm going to come back to take you on to myself. So you're, listen to this, you going to heaven is not because of heaven in itself. You going to heaven is because God is taking you onto himself. So the focus ought not to be on heaven, but the focus ought to be on God 
who is in heaven and God who owns the heaven. Hallelujah. That's the breaking news for you. Praise the Lord. So, the very first thing that you should be concentrating on right now is your relationship with God. Your attention should be centered on God because it is obvious personally, I mean, in a natural sense, I will not tolerate you. I will not accommodate you. I will not even welcome you into my house. No matter how beautiful that house looks, as long as I know you hate me and you dislike me, why would I tolerate you? Why would I accommodate you in my home when I know you, you dislike me? How do we want to get to heaven if we do not love this God who owns the heaven? I want to announce to you today that heaven is nothing without God. You want me to say that again? Heaven is nothing without God. Hallelujah. No matter how fascinating heaven is, no matter how astonished the building is, Heaven is nothing without God. But let me say this to you. No one has ever gone to heaven. No one has ever gone to heaven without being surprised. All those who've been there already, we're not there yet, but those who have already gone ahead of us, up to this present day, they are full of surprises. They are baffled. Their minds cannot comprehend what they've seen. Hallelujah. Up to this present moment, all those who are in heaven, they are full of surprises. They are full of amazement. They are like, wow. Because all that has been going on in heaven, take note of this, take note. Every single thing that has been going on in heaven demonstrates the sovereignty of the God that we serve, Jehovah. Everything that is going on in heaven illustrates the power, the glory of our God. Heaven is not a place where someone will go and say, mm, uh, I thought it was going to be. No, 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 no. Heaven is not a place where someone is going to go and say, oh, oh, I wish it would have been something. No, 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 it's not like that. When you get there, some of us will knock our knees down and say, wow, wow, wow. This is amazing. This is wonderful. This is a mystery. You'll be shocked. When we talk about beauty, huh, wait until you get to heaven. I plead to you today and with all sobriety that you should focus on the owner of heaven or else you will miss heaven. Hallelujah. No one will go to heaven if they hate God. No one. You know, I have so much to say, but just a, a few, just a gist, just a gist, a little bit about God. Just a little bit. Not to ignore heaven, that it doesn't exist. Heaven exists. I said to you before, God is the owner. I showed you scripture that he created the heavens and earth. But there is what I call a progressive knowledge in heaven. Take note of this. A progressive knowledge in heaven. Now I'm going to say some deep things that you may have never heard before. A progressive knowledge in heaven has to do with God. I call it a progressive knowledge of heaven. I'll tell you why. In heaven when you get there, not only that you're going to be full of surprises, Ignorance is not tolerated in heaven. There's no place for ignorance. <laughs> Amen. So it's not like when you go to heaven, you'll be like, eh, who is this? Who is that? Who is that? No, 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 you will know because at that time you were living in the realm of the spirit. Everything in heaven is transparent. Everything in heaven is revealed. Everything in heaven is clearly unique. In fact, if you are in heaven and you are thinking about anything, the other people will see. They will know what you're thinking about. So you don't need to explain yourself. So knowledge permeates everything in heaven. Knowledge permeates everything in heaven. So you don't need to say, okay, I want to. No, no, no. You will because you know everything. But there is one issue that happened in heaven that I want to reveal. And that is why I came up with this um, 
um, um, definition of progressive knowledge about God. In heaven, the only thing that you will continue to learn about is God. He's the only one you will be learning about, not about Father Abraham, not about what happened to Isaac and Jacob. You're not going to go there and say, ah, yes, I want to talk to Adam and Eve. How, how, how come you guys, you messed up? No, 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 no. When you get there, you will know without no one explaining that to you. You're not going to say, oh, come on, David, how did you kill the lion the other day that the lion showed up and tried to take one of your, your sheep? No, no, no. You're not going to, David has no time to explain to you. Because you know what? When you get there, as soon as you're there, you know exactly what is going on. Because you are existing also in the realm of the spirit. But in heaven, you are going to continuously discover or learn about God forever and ever and ever. And I'll tell you why. You know why? Because number one, God is the reason for heaven. God is the reason for heaven. So when you get there, you're going to continuously learn about God and about Him forever and ever and ever. Praise the Lord. Every other thing else is revealed. But the sovereignty of God is so huge. And it is so deep to the extent that he had to reveal himself every now and again. And take note of this. We're not going to go to heaven. Take note, I'm not despising holiness, righteousness, purity. I preach all of that. But listen to this. Holiness, righteousness, purity, faithfulness, Christian integrity, and all of these things that were preached Take note. All of these are requirements for the entry of heaven. These are requirements for us to be able to enter into heaven. And these are the lives, I mean, these are the attributes of the life that we're going to live. Amen? But I want to announce to you that the reason why you're going to go to heaven it's just because God is there. <laughs> are you surprised? You are going to go to heaven because God is there. Already Jesus has said, where I am, there you may be also. The requirement of going there is holiness, righteousness, um, live at peace with all men. The Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I will give you scriptures quickly. Soon, in the book of Revelation, where it says anything that defiles itself will not make it. Right? Those are all requirements of going there. But the most important reason of you going to heaven, number one, is because God is there. If he's not there, there's no heaven. If he's not there, you're not going there. Hallelujah. Number two, it is because he had promised us that he would take us there. Number three, it's because he wants us to be there. Number two, he had promised us that you will be there. And number three, because he wants us to be there. If you go back to the text, it says, verse three, if it's, it says, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. So God is very conscious about you. So if he is that conscious about you, you and I also ought to be conscious about our relationship with him. Hallelujah. You are going to go to heaven also because, this is very deep, you're going to go to heaven because God is going to fulfill his promise. He's going to fulfill his promise. He says, where I am, there you may be also. Another reason is because he wants to be with us. And he wants you and I to be with him. Amen? It's because he wants to be with us and he wants you and I to be with him. 
Hallelujah. I do not have enough time, but I'm just going to give you some major scriptures and then we go further. Hallelujah. Revelation 21, Revelation 21 verse 3. Revelation chapter 21 verse 3. Revelation 21 verse 3. I'll read quickly. It says, And I heard a great voice. Take note. I heard a great voice out of the heavens saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Hmm. And he will dwell with them. You see that? In other words, the tabernacle that is the house of God. He says, Behold, the house of God is with men, and he will dwell. Hey, hey, hey. Shout a big hallelujah, because the thing that I want to reveal to you is that God is going to dwell with us. Listen, don't you miss the opportunity of going there to be with God. Hallelujah. He says, God will dwell with men, and he, he says, and he will dwell with them, hmm. and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. You see, second emphasis. Number one, he says, he will be with them, he will be with his people, but then on the other hand, he says, and God himself shall be with them, and he says, and be the God. We've been serving him for too long here on earth. And he's saying, when everything comes to an end, you will see me, you will experience me, and you will be with me for eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to make a point. And that is Everything in heaven is centered on God. Everything in heaven is centered on God. The beauty of heaven has to do with God. The settings, the protocols of heaven has to do with God. See that lives give a sense of direction. So in other words, the sense of direction in heaven is God himself. Okay, let me make this clear. The center of attraction in heaven is God. So when they look at the light, everybody looks at the light and everybody sees one thing and one thing only, and that is God. The focus in heaven is God. There are no lights there. The only light that we have there is God. That is to say, the brilliance of the presence of God lightens the heaven. The glory of Jehovah God, the mystery, the wonder the Bible says the presence of God, just his presence alone, lightning the entire heavens. So it clearly shows that heaven is not heaven without the presence of God. And the presence of God is the center of attraction. So in other words, heaven is all about God. In Revelation chapter 22, 22 verse 5, we're just going to based on these two chapters now. Revelation chapter 22 verse 5, it says, And there shall be no night there. There will be no night there because God is there. And they need no candle, you don't need no candle, neither light of the sun. For, it says, I love this, it says, it says, For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. So God himself is the light in heaven. So when you get to heaven, when you see, you see God. The focus is God. Praise the Lord. Everything that has to do with heaven has to do with God. Praise the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Let me just try to round up. I have a few more minutes. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation 21, verse 23. Revelation 21, 23. What does it say? 21, 23. It says, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb 
the lamb, L-A-M-B, not lamb, and the lamb is talking about Jesus Christ. The lamb that is Jesus is the light thereof. So take note of this. The source of power to radiate the glory of heaven comes from God. Everything from God. So God is the source of everything in heaven. Another scripture is in the Revelation 22 verse 1. Take note, I love this one. It is it, it, it spells it out in a very majestic way. Revelation 22 1. And he showed me a pure river. I will say something very major here. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God. Take note, this river is actually proceeding. It's not saying the river is flowing toward the throne of God, but it is what? Proceeding. Hallelujah. It's proceeding out of the throne of God. Hmm. And of the Lamb. So in other words, the light comes from God. The water comes from God. I wish I have time to emphasize on the light and the water and the importance of light and water in heaven. Light and water here on earth. Jesus emphasized it when he was here on earth. He says, I'm the fountain of living water. He also says, I'm the light of the world. It's in John chapter 1. He talks about Jesus being the light. You remember John was saying, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And he got to the point where he's saying, he showed up, and the world could not comprehend him. And he says, he's the light, the lightning, the whole earth. Nobody could get it. He was revealing that God came as a human being. And not only that he came as a human being, he paid the price for us because there was no one else and nothing is qualified to pay the price except himself. So I'm here to announce to you today that God is the source of heaven and everything that exists in heaven is as a result of God. So our focus ought not to be about going to heaven, going to heaven. Our focus ought to be on our relationship with God who owns the heaven. Because when we get there, it's not about heaven anymore. It's about God in heaven. Hallelujah. The, 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 the kingdom of God that is heaven is God's project. It's not our project. It is God's project. He called us. He appointed us. He assigned us to play a role in his project. Revelation chapter 21 verse 2. Revelation 21 verse 2. Hallelujah. It says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming. Take note of this. It says this city, take note, take note, is deep. This is deep. This city is coming down from who? From God. You see that? It is coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 